adventurer, soldier, son of a former queen, half-brother to a king, and guardian and mentor to another, Jasper Tudor led a remarkable life. It also included fleeing abroad to escape his enemies, losing and winning his lands and titles, and being sentenced to death. Jasper Tudor was a behind-the-scenes architect of the Tudor dynasty. He played a great role in bringing King Henry VII to the throne. And he left behind, here in Cardiff, a glorious architectural reminder of his existence. Jasper lived during the Wars of the Roses. As is often the case during that turbulent time, his story is very complicated, with many twists and turns, disasters and triumphs. He was born in Hatfield, now in Hertfordshire, in 1431. His mother was the former Queen Catherine of Valois, the widow of King Henry V and mother of King Henry VI. His father was Sir Owen Tudor, a Welsh nobleman. They had married in secret. That later cast a question mark over the validity of their marriage. When Catherine died and Owen fell out of favour and was imprisoned, Jasper and his brother Edmund were eventually taken under the wing of their half-brother, the Lancastrian king, Henry VI. They were well looked after. Jasper was knighted in 1449 and created Earl of Pembroke soon after. Jasper's older brother, Edmund Tudor, had married Lady Margaret Beaufort, but he died of the plague months before his son Henry Tudor, the future King Henry VII, was born in Jasper's Pembroke Castle. Then, in 1461, came disaster for Jasper. He had become an experienced soldier and had achieved several military successes for Henry VI. But his Lancastrian army was defeated at the Battle of Mortimer's Cross near the Welsh borders by the Yorkist army under the soon-to-be king Edward IV. Jasper's father, Owen, was captured, executed, and his head was put on display in Hereford. Jasper got away, but then he became the subject of a legal attainder. That meant he would forfeit his lands, his hereditary titles, and his life. It was time to make himself scarce, and so Jasper fled to Scotland. He returned in 1470 when Henry VI briefly regained the throne, but when the Lancastrians were crushed at the Battle of Tewkesbury and Edward IV was king again, he was forced to flee once again. This time he took the 13-year-old Henry Tudor with him. They fled from Tenby, and a violent storm caused them to land in Brittany, where they were allowed to stay. For the next 11 years, Jasper was Henry Tudor's guardian, looking after his nephew's education and military training. Jasper plotted their return. Meanwhile, in their absence, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, had seized the throne and become King Richard III. The time came to return. A fleet of 30 ships set sail, with exiles and French mercenary soldiers. Henry and Jasper landed in Pembrokeshire and then marched to Bosworth, where Richard III was slain in that famous battle. Henry Tudor was crowned King Henry VII. Jasper's titles and fortunes were more than restored. He was awarded the Lordship of Glamorgan, made a Knight of the Garter, and Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. Jasper was now a very powerful man as emphasised by how he wished to be known. It may sound very modest now, but of course those were very different times. Now in his mid-fifties, he married for the first time to Catherine Woodville, whose sister, if you could keep up with all of this, had been married to the enemy, the Yorkist king Edward IV. A wealthy man, Jasper had control of much land and many castles, including the one in Cardiff. And as for the architecture he left behind in Cardiff, it's here, right behind me, at Llandaff Cathedral. In 1485, he paid for the construction of the Cathedral's Northwest Tower. The Jasper Tower now holds the Cathedral's bells. He's also commemorated there with a 19th century stained glass window showing him with his wife, Catherine. Jasper died in 1495 at the age of about 64. 
As stipulated in his will, his entrails were buried in the parish church of Thornbury, Gloucestershire, and the rest of him interred at Canesham Abbey in Somerset. His widow, Catherine, remarried two months later. Jasper's work had been a great success. He had taken the young Henry under his wing and helped to make him king. The bond between them remained strong and the Tudor dynasty was born. Jasper was clearly a very ambitious man. It was his plotting, planning and sheer hard work that helped to put the Welsh Tudors at the very top of the English establishment.